Hello students, are you all fine? Let's start our social science class. We are moving to our second chapter. What's the name of the chapter? Yes, from Pray to Power. There's a small story in your textbook. Read it. Even the black gold has a story to tell. Friends, I'm Pepper. Can I invite you to the Europe a few centuries ago? The rural fox in Europe would kill some of their cattle for meat and preserve it for the prolonged winter season. The heavy snowfall in the winter was not favorable for the grass to grow in the cattle fields. Both the people and cattle faced shortage of food during the season. The solution for this was to preserve the cattle meat as food for winter. Remember that there was neither electricity nor refrigerator of any kind during that time. So they found me effective in preserving the meat and making it tastier. In short, I was inevitable for them. My friends cardamom, cinnamon and ginger, all spices like yam, were also loved by them. The traders came in search of us from the time immemorial. What's the story about? Which is the place mentioned in the story? Ah, yes. The place which we learned in our previous chapter. It's Europe. The pepper is inviting us to Europe few centuries ago. It's saying that the rural fox in Europe will kill some of their cattle for meat and preserve it for a long time. But when the winter came, the heavy snowfall was not favorable for the grass to grow in the cattle field. So, both the people and cattle faced shortage of food. So, what did they do? Yes, people found a way. It was, they killed some of their cattle for meat. They want to keep it for a long time. Nowadays, we save our food for more than one day using refrigerator. But in that olden time, there were no electricity, no refrigerator, etc. Then how did they save their food? Yes, they found pepper for preserving their food and making it tastier. Thus, the spices like this pepper, cardamom, cinnamon and ginger was inevitable for them. So, the spices like this pepper, cardamom, cinnamon and ginger were inevitable for them. So, what we learned from the story? The spices of our land was essential for the foreigners and the traders from different countries reached our land for the purpose of trade. So they want to travel from their country to our country. So what did they do? They discovered new sea routes. Which were the foreign countries reached our land for the purpose of trade? Do you know? They were Portuguese, Dutch, English and yes, French. So these were the foreign countries reached our land for the purpose of trade. Now let's learn about the European powers and their contributions. A sunny morning in the month of May 1498, three huge ships arrived at Carpat near Caricat. The dress and language of the mariners in the ship was not familiar for the native people. Who were they? Let's take a photo. Do you know which country he belongs to? Some children know, somebody not. Don't worry, let's take another photo. Yes, you all are familiar with his country. Which is the country? Yes, Portuguese. So they were the traders from Portuguese under the leadership of Vasco da Gama. They reached our land for the purpose of trade. 
But Zamorin, the king of Malabar at that time, was not ready to provide trade facilities to them. So what did they do? They left from Calicut and went to Kannur and collected the goods they needed and went back to Portuguese. Goa, Daman and Diu were the major trade centers of the Portuguese. Following Vasco da Gama, two more sailors from Portuguese reached our land for trade. They were Almeida and Albuquerque. Before moving to the contribution of the Portuguese, let's take a small column in your textbook. Vasco da Gama got a profit which was 60 times greater than the cost of their voyage by selling the goods they took back with them. What's in the column? Yes, they collected the goods. The profit which they got by selling these goods was 60 times greater than the money they were needed to spend for their voyage. Now let's learn about the contributions of the Portuguese. First contribution was they constructed St. Angelo Fort at Kannur and Kottapuram fought in Trishur district. This was their first contribution. Let's take a brief description about these forts. St. Angelo Fort St. Angelo Fort, also known as Kannur Fort, is a fort facing the Arabian Sea, situated 3 km from Kannur. The Mopula Bay Harbour and Arakel Mosque are near the fort. During Vasco da Gama's visit to India, the local Koladiri king granted the land to Portuguese. On 23rd October 1505, he gave permission to the Portuguese leader, Francisco de Almeida, to build a fort at the land. The construction was started on the next day. The fort was later attacked in vain by the local Indian ruler Zamori and Koladiri in 1507. Kottapuram Fort Kottapuram Fort is situated in Kodungalur of Trishur district. The stone fort was built by the Portuguese in 1523. Kotapuram fort was an important part of the Nedukota fort which was built by Travancore to defend Tipu Sultan. The fort was enlarged in 1565. It is located at a strategic location on the entrance of the river Periyar. From the fort, it was easy to control the ships and boats passing to Kodungallu through this river. In 1663, the Dutch conquered the fort and was destroyed. Did you all read the description? Okay. Now let's move to the second contribution of the Portuguese. It was the agricultural crops like papaya, pineapple, guava, cashew, red chili, etc. Nowadays, we regularly use these crops. They contributed a worst crop also. It was tobacco. So this is the second contribution of the Portuguese. The third impact of the Portuguese was the widespread use of printing machine. We learned about the printing machine in the previous chapter. Who was the inventor of the printing machine? Yes, it's right, Johannes Gutenberg. The people of our land was not so familiar with the printing machine. After the arrival of the Portuguese, we started using printing machines. The fourth impact of the Portuguese was the development of the art form Chavitu Nadagam. Chavitu Nadagam is an art form of Kerala. You might have been visited or heard about Chavitu Nadagam. Let's take a small description about Chavitu Nadagam. Chavitu Nadagam is a highly colorful Latin Christian classical art form originated in Ernangulam district during 17th century CE. The Portuguese introduced this art form in Kerala. Fort Kochi is considered as the birthplace of Chavitu Nadagam. Chinnathambi Pilla and Vedanayagan Pilla are considered as the originators of this art form. It is noted for its costumes, makeup of characters, gestures and body movements presented in tune with the rhythmic music and supplement percussion. 
The pet themes of the Savitru Nadagam are Christ, saints and the history of kings. Mahanaya Alexander, Alexander the Great, Veera Yodakalude Andhyam, Death of Great Warriors, Saint Sebastian, Davidum Goliathum, David and Goliath are some of the most popular Savitru Nadagam plays. Kadigitam, kadigitam, gatta jigita, gatta jigita, gatta tingi na, 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 Okay, what was the four contributions of Portuguese? First one was, they constructed St. Angelo Fort at Kannu and Kottapuram Fort in Thrissur district. And the second contribution was, the agricultural crops like guava, papaya, pineapple, cashew, red chili and tobacco. The third contribution was, the widespread use of printing machine and the fourth one was the development of the art form Chavitu Nadaga. Although the Portuguese contributed and collected goods, they were not able to establish many trade centers in India. The reason for it was they did not have enough economic and military resources to compete with other European powers. We told that not only Portuguese, many foreign countries reached our land. So, to compete in that high level, Portuguese was not having enough economic and military resources. And the second reason was, they faced resistance from their native forces. The native country was not ready. So, these were the reasons that did not allow Portuguese to establish many trade centers in India. The Portuguese was having another name. It was Parangis. The admirals of Zamori's naval force, that is Kunyari Marakyars, led the resistance against the Portuguese in the Malabar region. Now let's check a worksheet based on this. The second European power who reached our land following Portuguese was the Dutch. Kochi and Kollam was the major trade centers of the Dutch. Van Riede, a Dutch governor, initiated the compilation of a book on the medicinal plants of Kerala with the help of Itti Achudan Vaidya. The name of the book was Hortus Malabaricus. Let's take a small description about the book. Hortus Malabaricus is an old and important book on the medicinal plants of Kerala. It was published in 1678. 
It was compiled by Henrik van Riede from 1669 to 1676 with the help of E.T. Achudan Vaidya, a distinguished herbalist from the ancient traditional Irava physicians of Kerala. English and Malayalam translations of this book was published by University of Kerala in 2003 and 2008 because of the great effort of the Professor K.S. Manilal. Did you all read the description? Okay. The Dutch fought with Martandavar the king of Travancore, and were defeated in the Battle of Kolekil in 1741. They lost their land and was needed to shift from here. The Dutch was also known as Landens. Now let's move to the advent of the English. The English East India Company was formed in England in 1600 for trade with countries like China and our country India. They established many trade centers at Bombay, Kolkata and Chennai. Surat in Gujarat was their first trade center in India. The English East India Company, also known as British East India Company, was an English and later British joint stock company founded in 1600 by John Watts and George White as London as their headquarters. Their main products were cotton, silk, indigo dye, sugar, salt, spices, tea, etc. The company was formed to trade in Indian Ocean region and later with Queen China. After the Battle of Plassey, the company eventually started ruling large areas of India, including military and administration. Now let's move to the French. The French East India Company was established in 1664 and the French reached our land for the purpose of trade. Pondicherry, Karakal and Mahi were the chief trade centers of the French. Pondicherry was their headquarters. French East India Company was a colonial commercial enterprise founded on 1st September 1664 to compete with English and Dutch trading companies by Jean Baptist Colbert. Lorraine was the headquarters of the company. With the decline of Mughal Empire, the French decided to intervene in Indian political affairs to protect their interests, notably by forging alliances with local rulers in South India. French issued copper coin for internal Indian trade, gold pagoda for South India trade, and rupee in the name of Muhammad Shah for Northern India trade, cast in Pondicherry. Now we learn about the four European powers, that's Portuguese, Dutch, English, and French. Let's check a small worksheet. What you learn from today's class? Yes, first we learned that the spices of our land was essential for the foreigners and they reached our land for the purpose of trade. What was their contributions? Yes, they constructed St. Angelo Fort at Kannur and Kottapuram Fort in Trishur district. Then, ah. Uh, Agricultural crops like papaya, pineapple, guava, red chilli, cashew, tobacco, etc. Then the widespread use of printing machine and the development of the art form Savittu Nadagam. Good. Then what we learned about Dutch? Uh, the Dutch fought with Martha and Varma and were defeated in the Battle of Kolekil in 1741 then what we learned about the english east india company yes it was established in 1600 in england 
which was the first trade center in India? Yes, Surat, Gujarat. Then what did you learn about French East India Company? Yes, it was established in 1664 and Pondicherry was its headquarters. Let's wind up our today's class. Thank you.